In an earlier blog post, I created the Strange IOC template project, very similar to what you're looking at here, which simply puts some GUI out on the stage and allows you to click a UI button to clear the message which is shown on the screen and load a message, which is loading a local text file uh, into a data model and then rendering it to the, to the UI. Uh, the application is very simplistic, but it's an example of using the strange IOC free framework that's available on the asset store. Uh, there's some messaging here which shows the, uh, the flow of logic, if I go ahead and clear and restart, with some numbered trace statements that are uh, traced out using debug.log. And um, I'm going to go through those in a moment, not to look just at the strange IOC implementation, but specifically something that I created called the property change uh, signal. So first, jumping into the web, um, on my URL, uh, slash Unity. There's uh, all the Unity work that I've been doing recently, including a full HD tutorial training series on Unity and C Sharp, uh, a recent complete game that includes uh, full source and uh, what features of Unity are used to create that simple 3D game, um, and then a bunch of other articles. Um, in the architecture section, I wrote one simple bowling game using five or six different approaches. Uh, then I one of those approaches was in Strange IOC. I created the Strange IOC template project in a uh, second article, and there's a video that discusses that. Um, today, we're looking at the Strange IOC property change signals article, uh, which is seen here. So, what I show is that, um, you know, taking a look at both of these articles um, and then rewatching this video would be most helpful. But, uh, you know, in the bold text there, let me get a little bit bigger. You can see in a typical workflow, you're using a variety of signals to dispatch data flow in your application. Uh, for example, that message that's put out to the screen, which is a list of some text items. Um, maybe the UI must request that, that data from the model. Um, if it wants to clear it out when you click the clear button, there could be a message for that. Then to update the value, if perhaps it says score colon 100 and you want to change to score colon 200, you might update that value. Um, and then when that value is updated, there's an updated signal which comes back from the model to the view. So the view knows, in the case of the previous three messages, when that change has been done and when the model should uh, take care and update its, sorry, when the view should take care and update itself. Um, so the proposed change that I have here is um, oh, an implementation that's available. You can download it, check it out. Something called a property chain signal, which doesn't architecturally change how you'd organize your strange OSU project. You're still dispatching four different um, in, in four different places in your application. You're dispatching these these four concepts, but instead of using four different signals, um, you're using four of the same um, signal. Um, the instance is, is in four different places, and you're calling it. And we're able to articulate exactly what we want to happen by, you know, by, by passing a little bit more information along with the signal. So I just wanted to show where in the code uh, that works. So um, I can actually, using the blog post here, just show that in your, um, actually I'll jump into the project. I'll go over these same four steps that's in the blog article. But you can glance at the blog article after the video and see the code as well. So looking at the project here, um, the workflow, and some of this is reviewed from the last video, is that uh, you know the Strange IOC framework starts up, then um, we simulate the load button being clicked just so that it instantly loads. It saves me from needing to play the editor and then click the load message button. But the same thing happens here if I go ahead and click load message. Well, you know, we go ahead from uh, you know, this load message button, um, click command. Uh, then the service hears that, and the, the, the service goes ahead and loads the game script. When it's complete, it dispatches a signal that uh, the loaded game list is there. Uh, this is a list of video games, so it's called game list throughout the code, uh, just some PS Vita titles that are popular. Um, then the next step is there's a command that listens for when the service is ready. That command then updates the uh, game list property change command. I uh, see there's actually one extra M in this. So let me get rid of that. We'll type out here. And we'll be looking at where each of those pop up. Uh, then, uh, after the update happens in the data model, updated is dispatched. And then the, the view is going to listen to that. So I just want to look at those four 
sections of code briefly. Um, the additional code required here uh, that's included in the project, so outside of um, this general strange setup that you'd have, uh, there's a signal that we use, one signal. Uh, in this case, I've implemented it for one property that we're shepherding data back and forth, but you could have uh, the, you reuse this one signal for each of 10, 20, 30 different um, pieces of data that you're, you have in your application. And then there's the VO itself, the value object that sends a little bit more information along with each dispatch to let us know which of these four um, you know, events we're capturing, where we want to either do the update versus the updated, uh, etc. So let me just show the code here. Um, so first, starting from the context, again, if you, you need some familiarity with Strange IOC, but the context is what you know, is our big setup, uh, the bootstrap that starts the application. Um, in here, we are just setting this one command binder bind, and we're binding the signal to a command. Now, uh, something that, that's uh, not always noticed um, by newbies to Strange IOC is that when you do the bind in this way, you can also directly listen to that game list property chain signal from your um, from your view as well. So we are mapping the signal to the command, but also you can directly listen to that signal without caring about the command as well, if you care to do so. And, and we're taking advantage of, of both the command and the non-command. Um, actually see that spelling mistake is here as well. So we have an extra M in there. All right, let me just make sure that compiles for us now that I've fixed that typo. Yeah, okay. So after we've done that bind, uh, what are we binding to? Well, we're binding to a strange IOC command. And typically in a command, it's pretty granular. You're doing one specific thing. So we are blowing that, uh, that functionality out a little bit. And within the execute of the command, we're checking to see which of the property change types we're onto. Sometimes we care and sometimes we don't care, but I've, uh, I've iterated through all four possibilities here just so you can see. So in the event of a clear, this model uh, is going to be cleared out by calling its do clear method. Uh, in the event of an update, we're setting directly the model's game list property to the value that's coming along in that signal. And we do a little strong type in there to help that. Then in the case of an updated, in this implementation, the command here does not care when this model is updated. We'll actually listen for that in a different spot. Uh, and then there's the request. So if there's any model uh, that wants to ask for this data again, perhaps it came on the scene late in the case of a dialog box, so the application's running, um, different application, let's say, just hypothetically. If your application's running and all of the da data is a bit stale, uh, we're, you know, we're, we reached a point where data is not moving around and you want to spawn a dialog prompt in front of everything, you want that dialog prompt to be able to ask the model for the data it needs to maybe fill itself with whatever uh, information it needs. So you'd be able to use this request to say, hey, can you dispatch updated again so I, think I can grab that data from you? Uh, and that helps the view be able to get, uh, get data from the model. So that's what's happening here. And we do that by calling the models do dispatch updated. All it's really doing, it's not affecting the updated uh, Again, it's not affecting the value. It's just saying, go re-dispatch again one more time, please. And that's just helping us stay decoupled, the view and the model. So uh, let's jump into the model to see where a couple of these things are happening. So inside the getter setter for the game list itself, anytime that value is going to be changed through the setter, we're just going to be calling do dispatch updated. And if we jump into the declaration there, uh, whether the command calls this directly or whether the line we just looked at is going to call it upon an actual value change, we just do a dispatch with the updated and we pass along the uh, value uh, game list in this case so that we're able to listen to that. And the final piece, the fourth thing that we want to look at is the custom view mediator that's listening to this. It's going to uh, right here uh, inside its register in a typical strange IOC convention, it's going to add a, an event listener there or a signal listener for whenever the game list property changes. Uh, and uh, let's go down. So when that chain signal comes in, um, again, we could do the switch statement we saw before, doing something unique in all four cases for update, updated, clear, um, you know, in, in each of the situations. But here, 
in, in typical fashion, I'd imagine the view only cares upon updated, which is after the value has either changed or when we've manually requested the data. Um, and there you have it. So that's, that's how it flows there. And I'll just do one more time looking at the list here on the side. Uh, yeah, we covered all the bases there. That's the, the basic six steps to the data being loaded from, again, a, a local script file, gets loaded by the service, data is put into the model, and then we're able to use this new concept of the, uh, the property change signal uh, and its command that's linked uh, to just help. So not really doing anything new architecturally again. It's just a way to reduce the amount of signals that you have in your project may or may not be a care uh, depending on the way that your project and your team are set up but just presents an alternative way to use strange ioc um, that's it